you know what? I can't lie, this is like the 50th time I've had to record this video. I'm not sure why it's just been taking so long and I kept messing up. I just keep going off on a tangent, man. But here we are again. I'm going to get straight into it, man. So I'm going to be elaborating on the struggles that I've been facing, the things that I found to be hard, or the hardest things that I'm facing anyways on this little journey of mine. Balance being one of them. I've talked about this numerous times on the channel, so I'm not going to get into it too much. But an example is pretty much what I'm doing right now. I mean, I've been back at home for like a little over a week. I barely, if not, I haven't really touched upon my assignments that are due in. I haven't revised. I've been focusing completely on this YouTube thing because there's just no... There's no better time than to do it right now. I mean, I could do it in the summer, but I've got other ideas and plans and goals for the summer. So this was the best time and I feel that I can pretty much get everything done by the end of this week. Most of it anyways, when it comes to this YouTube thing, but just a small little example when it comes to balance. So there's the first one. And then the second one is just how I'm just being tested every single day. Every single day, resisting against those temptations that can just break you and causes you to pick yourself back up and just start again. Just little annoying things like that. And we're talking like being tested through every aspect of your life. You know, all the good habits that I've been able to build everything that I've been able to overcome, you know, and it doesn't end there. The discipline, you know, and the, add the fact that I'm, a, well, I'm more of a practicing Muslim now than I ever was. I'm trying to be better. But little things like that, the values, the morals, you know, the beliefs that come with it, you know, and I stand by them. I'm quite strong with them, you know. And they're being tested that really are being tested, holding on to the having, you know, holding on to your faith, man. And the things that come with it, especially when you're living in a degenerate place. That's pretty much uni in a nutshell. I mean, it's not my first year, but I've been exposed to it a lot more than I ever was. I mean, I live near campus, so... Everywhere I go, it's just surrounded by people that I know. And it's just that lifestyle. That's what university is about. It's just like degeneracy is promoted. And it's everywhere I go, in front of my face. Heck, I even live with uh, degenerates where degeneracy has taken place a few times. Like literally in the house that I live in. You know, I'm not the one that's engaging in it, but it's still there talking about in my house and to potential well potential to the flatmates that might be watching this video I mean no offense to anything that I'm saying I mean I hope you take no offense to what I'm saying but it's it's true like most of you if not all but I'm going to say most you are like degenerates it's just how it is that's just uni in a nutshell you know what I mean so everything being tested right because when you're on this journey, and it doesn't have to be with what I'm doing, but it can be like just a small aspect of that, whether it's you're trying to become a, whether you're trying to be more religious or you're just trying to build more discipline in other aspects of your life, whether it's fitness, health, your life, your other goals, ambitions, side hustles, jobs, career, just putting your head down. It involves a lot of sacrifice. And in doing so, there's a lot of freaking loneliness that is associated. Loneliness, the challenges of trying to not break under peer pressure with certain temptations. The fact that you're not going to fit in with everybody else as much. The patience that's involved. I mean, I could go on, but it's mainly those, those few things. And the 
fact that you feel like you're missing out on a lot of fun and a lot of good times, you know, and, and I'm not saying you should be a workaholic every single day of the week. I mean, you need to have a social life too and have a bit of fun every now and then, but just not on the degree that the people that I'm around are doing it, man. Like, these lot be moving mad, I can't lie. Again, moderation is key, but not everyone, it's hard to be moderate. I can vouch for that with certain things that I've done. I mean, I've always been a very extreme guy on one end or the other, doing nothing or doing everything, but yeah, man, the degeneracy here is pretty, pretty freaking bad. They're just not my kind of people. That being said, I talked about those few things, you know, the loneliness, the not being, not being able to fit in, all of that. Now, I'm going to kind of open up a little bit. So long story short, I've felt like I've already, ex in fact, I did. I've already experienced all of those things throughout, pretty much throughout my entire life, ever since I was like, not my entire life, but most of my life from when I was like 12 to maybe 21, 22. So quite recent. So like 10 years, I've already experienced all of these things and I learned eventually how it's okay if you're, if you don't really fit under the category, like you don't fit in, um, you're just a bit different. You have different interests to other people. Because long story short, with a lot of things that came around, I mean, I ended up doing a lot of things that I never even liked or enjoyed just to fit in, just to get validation from, validation from other people because, you know, um, I wasn't like them. I wasn't like them at all. But it took me long enough to learn those lessons to kind of be more confident with myself, just be more accepting of who I am. Again, it's, I can go into this all day, but it's a video for another time, but I basically learned those lessons and I became more comfortable in my own skin, you can say. So that being said, during that time, I always used to cling to this idea of like, always wanting to meet new people making a bunch of friends and having fun every single time, doing new things, savoring those moments so you can just cherish them for decades to come. Very idealistic thing, you know, something straight out of fiction. You know what I mean? I've always held on to that and I felt like I never really had that for those 10 years. Like, yeah, pretty much throughout those 10 years, I felt like I've never had that. Not once, because people always came and left. Things weren't as they appeared to be. I was very idealistic as well. There's just... I don't want to get into it too much because we're going to be here all day and it's just going to... Again, it's for another time if I elaborate into all of that. But... Just put that in mind. Put all of that in mind because that still eventually continued on until my first year of university. So this was about maybe two years ago in my first year where I thought this was now my time because the difference between then and those years before was the fact that I was on my own now. I thought this is my time. I've got the independence and... um there was no one to hold me back and it's funny because in that time as well that degenerate kind of lifestyle was something that I always craved it's something that I thought I've always wanted I wasn't much of a Muslim back then either so I was more agnostic kind of back then but the point is is that I still craved uh, that degeneracy I craved it and I still held on I still clung on to the idea I've always wanted 
and I had some good times and made a few good connections that I can't lie during that time. But once you, I mean, if you're at university, you're, you're going to experience degeneracy one way or another. I was never a full-blown degenerate. I never was. But I also had an, I also had this other mindset of if I can just try it once just because it's something new and I've never done it before, I'll be okay. And even if it was something I never wanted, I could say at the, I could always say at the end of the day that, you know what, I did it and it wasn't for me. Even knowing some of the repercussions beforehand, being mindful that certain choices have consequences. There's risks with a lot of it and I still did it anyways because I wanted to fit in. I wanted to be like them. Now put all of that in perspective. In the end, with some of those things that I experienced, it didn't mean anything. I wasn't, you know, the concept, how do I explain this? Nothing really happened. My expectations weren't met. I just thought to myself, like, is that it? Is this it? Like, this is what I was expecting. This is what everyone was saying was so great, so grand, and it was meant to give you... I've got no fulfillment and no happiness from that whatsoever. It was just like, eh. don't need to ever do it again. It's just like, meh. And that was pretty, that's pretty much my first year of uni, man. I found a lot of it to be boring as well. And I'm like, this can't be it. And some of the people as well, like, they weren't as sociable as I thought. I was a very introverted and nervous guy. I had my anxiety was was bad back then. It really was. And the fact that I was the guy that had to be a bit more sociable compared to every, like, it was weird. It was like the the tables turned and I'm thinking, this is not how it was supposed to be. And the certain things that I ended up doing as well, like it was, it's never like, it, I never did anything like that bad, but it's just like that mindset that I had of doing it once, even though I know it had repercussions, it was so, looking back, it was like the most unnecessary things that I've ever could have possibly done. It was just com the most unnecessary things in my entire life, the most unnecessary choice ever. Like there was literally no point in taking it. You literally took it for the wrong reasons just to fit in and say that you did it at the end of the day, now you're like me. It's like, it's not the best analogy, but you know jumping off a cliff is bad, right? You're already educated on the matter. Jumping off a cliff and doing certain drugs are bad for you, right? You know it's bad, so you're not going to take it, but then you're still willing to take it despite the consequences and despite what you know. You're putting everything on the line you know, risking your health possibly just so you could fit in. Even though there's a good chance of it being the potential cause of your downfall later on in life, it can lead you down a downward spiral. The fact that I was like that, it just uh, boggles my mind sometimes man and the reason why I'm making this point or I've told you everything I said is because as of right now the one thing that has come up is alcohol and now if there's one thing that I've managed to that I'm quite proud of in fact I am proud of it and I'm not sure how I managed to do it my entire life because I've had friends my closest friends at the time, they always drink. A lot of the social settings that I was around, it was just nothing but filled with alcohol. Like alcohol, like everywhere you go. I've never tasted a drop of alcohol in my entire life. That's the one thing that I can say I've got. And people think you're abnormal for doing that. Or abnormal for being like that. But to me, it's like, that's the one bit of purity that i got left. I'm a Muslim, you're not even supposed to drink. So I find, and the funny thing with that is, I mean, when I'm, ever since I've come back now, 
you know, my return to university, things are a little bit, they are a bit different. I've been offered many times to drink, to have vodka. Have one, it's going to be fine, not that big of a deal. Um, people wanting to buy me a drink <laughs> quite a few times. And I'm like, I don't drink, mate, I'm, I'm good. And then whenever I'm alone, despite everything that I've been through, everything that I've learnt, the mistakes that I've learnt from other people. So I'm I'm quite conditioned to a lot of things, you know? I've been... But like, despite everything that I've been through, like, I was still contemplating whether I should just drink alcohol once just so I could say, you know what, I fit in and then it wasn't for me. Like, there might not be a big thing to you. And again, I, it never worked. I beat myself... You know, I won that inner, those inner battles within me. I faced those. I basically managed to stay strong. But the fact that I was contemplating to drink, despite everything that I've been through, you know, 10 years of making the same mistakes, the lessons that I learned, everything that I built, just the fact that I put, I'm put, i willing to put all of that on the line. And to others, to most people, it might not, th- it might not seem a, might not be like a big thing to you. But to me it is because I would have essentially betrayed everything that I stood for. I would have been betraying myself. And there are risks when it, when it comes to alcohol, especially from a guy that's, I'm not going to get too much into my past. Again, it's just opening another can of worms. But like, for me, the cons outweigh the pros by a long shot. The fact that I was contemplating of just risking it all, like despite everything that I've been through and everything that I've accomplished. Just, it's like, despite everything, despite what's happened there's always still a risk and there's always going to be times where you're tested and that that freaking scared me like once I'm like thinking about it I'm like I I could have caved in I didn't but the fact that I was thinking about it I'm like that's just not cool bro it's not right especially when you're a guy like me or a guy, or anyone that's a Muslim. So I know a lot of you Muslims out there that have broken under those conditions, and I, I'm not one to say, I'm not one to judge. You have your reasons, but like you know, it's not something you're supposed to be doing. And again, I'm not trying to beat my own drum, but I'm trying to point out of how it's very easy to you know, succumb to those temptations. But that was the one thing that, like, I just thought, I was just thinking, I was thinking of, like, it almost got me. And it was quite hard to fight those in the battles. And the next one, the next point that I'm going to make, I'm not going to get into it too much, is, and this kind of, alludes to the eight people that I mentioned in the last video that had a little bit of drama with it. It's not even like drama, but like these were people in my class that I was very cool with. It was like just me and two other people. And then it became from like a one versus two situation to a one one versus eight. And I'm like, for God's sake, here we go again. Then out of the blue, they do a complete 180 where... They acted very cold. So it obviously confused me for weeks. And I'm thinking this is very weird because we were cool with with each other. We got along very well and suddenly you're very distant and awkward and cold towards me. You know? And then there were times where they ended up talking to me because I wasn't going to, you know, entertain. It's like they were playing hard to get. They wanted my attention. 
for some, for, I still don't know why, like the way things went down. Because obviously it takes communication to break those barriers and I was the only one willing to communicate. I showed it at least and these people weren't willing to do the same. So it was just a platonic intention from my part to kind of resolve things. And I'm like, if this is the way it's going to go, people like that, I normally cut them out. I just don't really care. <laughs> I couldn't care less. Like right now, I couldn't care less because it's not the same because a lot of these people ended up, they ended up approaching me because I wasn't giving them the attention that they wanted, I, sh I should say. I mean, they'd be giving me attention, but I'm not giving it to them because I just haven't got the energy for this childish crap anymore. I'm way too old for it. But it's very weird. Like, even how I'm describing it on paper, it sounds so weird, but like, and it sounds so childish, like I'm 16 or something, but that's literally it. I just found, found it to be annoying because as of right now, they're just trying to get my attention. And I have absolutely no idea why. I'm not sure why I'm so special to them. I just find it annoying because, I mean, they're in my class, so I see them quite often. You can't exactly cut these people out. And um, the fact that they're not willing to resolve anything... Yeah, very childish stuff. But, yeah, I mean, with the situation that I'm in now as well, not even a situation, but ever since I've, you know, improved myself in certain aspects of my life and I've become more confident, I've kind of put myself on the map and I know a lot of people. So I'm very well recognised on campus, you can say. So I, and people too, give me a lot of attention. Like I get a lot of attention now, more than I ever did in my entire life. From like everyone. People want me to be in their circle. They want to be around me. And I'm not, again, not saying this to beat my own drum, but compared to what I used to be, like a guy who was non-existent, a guy that always tried to fit in, like this is quite new to me. You know, it's, well, it's never been on this level. Never been on this level. And this is what happens when you're somewhat of a polarizing figure. I'm not saying I'm a Justin Bieber, Will Will Smith, or you know any big time Hollywood celebrity, but I've been more polarizing than I ever was. And when you're a polarizing figure, two things tend to happen. Because you exist now, people are either gonna like you a lot or they're going to dislike you a lot and from my knowledge i haven't experienced any like negativity except with those or some of those individuals in that eight man group the video cut out so as i was saying with the attention that you get also comes a few girls that are interested in you and the hard thing is the fact that you're resisting it. You're not giving them that attention and you're not pursuing anything even further. You're not even entertaining it. It's hard. It's extremely hard because this is where you feel like you're really missing out. And it's not even the fact that, you know, I can't, it's, it's not fear. That's holding me back. Trust me when I say this. It really isn't fear, man. It's the fact that you have the confidence to actually pursue and actually make moves and do something. But you know it's not good for you. It's like having a kind of power, but you know you need to use it in a responsible and appropriate way. It's like the saying when you're Spider-Man, you know what I mean? You know, with great power comes great responsibility. Because for me, in my case, everything that's happening to me now, it's never been at this sort of level before. I've never really experienced it before. So it's very easy to let it get to your head. And it's very easy for one to break and just forget everything that they've ever worked and stood for. You know, and 
again, it feels like you're missing out because you're not, you're just not doing what everyone else is doing. And when it comes to girls, you're not in relationships. You're not. Just the obvious reasons. And yeah, it's a, oh, it's just, ay, ay, ay. it's a very hard thing to kind of overpower. It's hard to resist, but it's possible, man. It takes a lot of freaking willpower. And me being a Muslim, with the ones that are interested in me, I mean, you're not you're not even supposed to entertain the casual scene or play into this whole dating game. Like, bro, me at this point in my life, it's just so freaking exhausting. It's so tiresome, and I'm not gonna get into it. I'm gonna put two links in the description where you got two people that explain all of this way better than I ever could. And these are people that have done things on the highest level. So I'll leave it to them. They talk about, you know, the casual scene and the whole dating game. Because there was also a point where I considered to myself, I was contemplating whether I should pursue certain things just so I could improve myself on the game and just learn more about women and maybe spot the red flags way faster and just improve my own game, just kind of work on myself in that aspect of my life. And even then, it has, it never felt right with me. So I never did it. It doesn't align with the Islamic teachings whatsoever. I'm not like, well, how do I explain this? I'm not trying to make this too much about religion, but like, it's not going to work. Because I also know what I'm looking for if I ever consider to have a potential partner. Like, you'd want someone that's kind of compatible, right? And in my case, it's just basic things. You know, if for, bro, if they're not even a Muslim, where the hell is it going to go? Like, I'm not here to waste time. I don't care about that kind of... It's not even... I'm not even about that life, bro. I wouldn't I wouldn't want that. They're not a Muslim for starters. They they always drink and they don't pray five times a day. And speaking of Muslims, I say Muslim, but then like in my hometown where I live, so here, you know, a lot of these people are Muslims on paper, girls and guys, but <laughs> these lot have been cheating and they drink more, they fornicate, having illicit relationships with... Oh, it's insane. Like, these lot... Make, these lot are like... They've perfected the art of degeneracy to the highest degree, man, I can't lie. And they... I'm not going to get into all of that, but I know what I would look for, for at least... Even if I can't see someone as a friend or someone to hang out with, it's a waste of time. Again, I'm very selective with the people that I hang out with. It's just not something I'm willing to entertain. Because I know what I need and I know what's good for me. And it's not this. But it's just very easy to you know, slip up and entertain it because of, one, your natural baseline desires as a guy. And two, because... You feel like you're never going to get the chance again. But I know it's just not worth it. I know, knowing me, I'm, it's never going to be worth it. So I'm going to avoid it. And even still, like, I need to avoid it as well. Because with me right now, with the goals that I have in mind, I haven't even built my foundation, for starters. I haven't even built my foundation... I haven't even gotten started with a lot of the th goals and things that I need to accomplish. I haven't built a lot of value as a man. I haven't become the man that I wanted to be. I'm not even close. So even if I was with like, you know, a good wife, you can say, or a good partner, or with someone good, like someone of good quality I'm not saying I'm someone of good quality but you know I'm just putting it out there even if I was with someone of like great quality 
even they would get in the way of what I need to do to sustain myself in the long run. You know, I'm like, what do you call it? Delaying instant gratification. That's what I'm trying to do. But you're being, but I'm being tested every single day and it's freaking hard, bro. But, you know, these are the hardest things that I'm kind of currently going through. But I mean, it's, despite all of that, I'm, I'm managing to pull through. And again, I'm winning a lot of these battles. So I've stuck to my guns. I've stuck to my word. It's going to continue to be like that too. But I'm putting it, but the reason why I'm saying all of this is because I want to show that it can be done in this way or the way I'm doing it. You know, you don't need to entertain or try and fit in or do any of the stuff that I mentioned, you know. Everyone's going to be different. I understand that, but that's what things are like for me. So I know what I need to do. It's just it's just a matter of staying true to my word at this point for myself. And I guess for some of you out there who are similar to me in a way, maybe who can relate with the things that I'm saying and maybe you're struggling a lot more than me or you're doing a better job than I am. But I want to show that it can be done. I want to show that you can get results, you can get success by refraining and abstaining from these sort of things. I genuinely believe that it can be done. And that's how I'm going to end it. But you know what? The next couple of videos are going to be a bit more positive. It's not going to be as serious as this. But yeah, I've covered everything that I needed to cover in this video. And uh, I hope some of you can just relate to what I'm saying. You know? So yeah, I hope you guys can understand and uh, take it easy, man.